Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. A rather warm Tuesday here in Virginia. Weather was actually nice and not cold. I don't like the cold. What about you guys? Do you like the cold? Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. I've got Leela first, I've got my mom second. I see Bryson and Kendall are here, my cousin's here. Hi, Anaya, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Happy Tuesday. What kind of book do you think I'm gonna be reading today? Hey, Max, I'm glad you're back. Shay is here, hi guys, hi great ones, hi great ones. Predictions for the book I'm gonna be reading tonight. You guys know I like to make predictions, so I like to have you guys to make predictions on the book that you think I might be reading tonight. What do you think? What do you think? Casey Star. I still got my stars on, Casey. Are you wearing stars right now? Are you wearing stars? Thanksgiving book, a turkey book. Mm, these are really good predictions, especially since Thanksgiving is coming up. Maybe it's going to be a book. Hi, Liz. Carson, you're back. My Carson from last year. I still miss you, Carson. What kind of book do you think I'm going to read, Carson? I see turkey book, turkey book. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. You guys are going to see pretty soon. You're going to see if it's going to be a turkey book or could be a different type of book about being thankful for the things that you have. Mm -hmm. Did anyone predict that? So that means that you're going to bring me a piece of pumpkin pie tomorrow. <laughs> Mm, I'm visualizing, tasting it. I see it. I see the orange. I can taste it. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you. You wish. Well, you just put some my connector. Hi, connector. Nyla, how are you? Thanksgiving book. Janicia is with me. Hi, Janicia. Hi, Janicia. Janicia, everyone is making a prediction as to what type of book I'm going to be reading tonight. I see that it's Janicia. Gonna wait another minute, just allowing people to join in, and then I'm gonna let you see what kind of book I'm gonna read, and then you will be able to see if your prediction is correct. Great! I predicted that Miss Shirley was gonna read a Thanksgiving book, and she actually did. If your prediction was wrong, great! You're just gonna you're gonna change your prediction, and that's all it is. A prediction is just a guess. You guys are using the fact that Thanksgiving is in a couple of days to predict that I'm gonna read a Thanksgiving book. Everyone is saying turkey, 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 turkey book. <laughs> I almost wanted to make the turkey sound that I was making for you guys earlier. You know, I like to be creative with my animal sounds since I like animals so much. Sheila thinks that it's going to be a Thanksgiving book. Everybody thinks a Thanksgiving book. I wonder if your predictions are correct. Hey, cuz, how are you? How's everybody up there? What's the weather like up there? I bet you guys are cold. We had nice weather today. It was in the, it was almost 70. I think it was about 67, although we had been having cold weather. All right. Hi, Jaden. Hi, Riley. My great ones are here. My great ones are here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully at the end, I can have a special guest, but I think Facebook has changed some things and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to have a guest or not, but we'll find out soon. So when you read, things that you want to do. Why don't you guys tell me? Why don't you guys, I'm always starting off and telling you, why don't you tell me some of the great strategies for read? I'm going to wait a minute and see. Hi, Julian. You're here. You're here. I figured it would be cold up there. You went to the football. You went to the playoffs, anyone? Hey, that's what I'm talking about. That greatness that's in you. That's what I'm talking about, Carson. I want to know reading strategies. I want you guys to tell me. I would like to see four different reading strategies that I tell you guys about on here every week, and great ones in my classroom every day. I want you guys to tell me, I'm gonna wait about a minute for you to tell me some reading strategies that I tell you about over and over and over, and I tell you to lock it in. I hope you've locked some of those things in. Visualize, thank you, Shay. Yes, you wanna visualize, and when you visualize, you get to paint a picture in your head of what you think the characters are like. You get to visualize and you need you can connect and say, hmm, this is what it'd be like for me. Like for instance, if I were to say a polar bear, 
What all do you visualize? What do you see? I see nothing but white. And I see a polar bear. And I see an Arctic fox following a polar bear. What do you hear? I hear a lot of wind. Because they're not trees and lots of buildings out there where the polar bears are. How do you feel? I feel cold. And it makes me unhappy. What's another strategy? So visualize, lock it in, igloo. I didn't say igloo. That's good, Bryson. Cold. What's another strategy other than visualizing? I'll give you a hint. I already said it today. What did I already say today? An Arctic owl. Yes, the snowy owl. You guys are doing all your hey, hey, hi, hi, hi. So another strategy would be to predict. Predicting means that you use some clues and you just make a good guess. You're not really sure, but you make a guess. Like a lot of you guys have predicted that I'm going to read a Thanksgiving book tonight. Something else that you always want to do is you want to make connections. You want to say, hey, the book that you're reading to me right now, Miss Yerby, reminds me of a book that my teacher read last year. That would be a text-to-text -text connection. Or you can say, oh, Miss Yerby, you just read a book to me where a boy was jealous about sharing his things with his sister. Those of you who did the test today, you read that. And you can say, I remember one time when my sister was really mean to me and she didn't want me to share her toys. That would be a text to self connection. Or something that we don't do as often, a text to world connection. Maybe we're reading a book about a fire. And you can say, oh, Miss Yerby, the Amazon rainforest is burning. That would be a text to world connection. Those are the things you want to do. I'm trying to see, do I have any more strategies from you guys? Someone did say make connections. Infer. Inferring is when you use clues, lots and lots of clues, things that you already know and something that you see and you're able to make an inference. If you look outside and you see windshield wipers going back and forth and if you see people walking around with umbrellas, what can you infer is going on? Well, you already know that windshield wipers are put on when it's raining. You already know that people hold umbrellas up when it's raining, so you can infer that it's raining. Those are the things that you should always, always, always do. And tonight, we're going to also practice asking questions. And I'm going to get started with it. This is the book. Do you want to see? Do you want to see if it's really a turkey book like so many of you have said? Let's find out. Sequencing. Yes, yes. We've been working on sequencing, too, and you can sequence so that when you retell a story, you'll be able to say, well, first, after that, then, and that's going to help you with understanding the story as well. All right. I have covered up the title because I don't want you to see it. I want you just to look at this picture. I think I forgot to say use pictures. Oh, my gosh. You should always use the pictures because the author spends just as much time working on the pictures and making sure that the pictures tell the story, the illustrator does, not the author, as the author does with the writing. Look at this picture. What do you think? What do you think this is going to be about? Why in the world would the illustrator draw this? What do you think? What are your pictures? Hi, Casey, sister. Hi, great one. What do you think? Just look in here. And as I take this off, and you actually read the title, let me know if your prediction changes. Nathan Strong. And it's also written on the shirt. Did your prediction change? Why would the author call this book Nathan Strong? And why would the illustrator draw a picture that looks like this? What do you think is going to happen in this book? What do you think you will learn? I love you too. Hi, Andrea. A strong boy. So are you saying that this reminds you of No David? Have you just made a text-to-text -text connection? Being brave. Nathan Strong. Written and illustrated by Nathan Grogan. Oh, so I guess 
This is a book about him. He wrote a book about himself. Let's find out what this is all about. Carson, that is Bryson's younger brother, Kendall. Kendall's in my classroom this year, so it's not Bryson. You guys are going back and forth. It's actually Kendall that's watching. It's not Bryson. Here's a story of a little boy, every day full of adventure, games every second full of joy, an active mind where numbers always run, just like the ocean flowing under the summer sun. And see right here, if I would have showed you this picture first, you would have been able to say, oh, I guess he likes math. Give me some thumbs up. Anybody in here or on here that can make a text to self connection to say, oh, I really like math too? Is there anyone? I actually can make a text to self connection. It says every day full of adventure. And any of you that know me, you know that I am full of adventure. I've got lots of energy, just like Mason. Why do you think this picture would be here? What do you think we're gonna learn about Nathan from this picture? Nathan has an incredible imagination that is always ready for creation. From the stories he writes to the games he plays, Nathan's creativity goes for days and days and days. Well, his creativity, it says the stories that he writes and the games that he plays, what's your creativity? What is something that you are really creative at? I am pretty creative at making animal sounds. You guys that have been watching me for a while have heard me make them on here. My great ones in my classroom, you hear it all the time. And sometimes you guys are like, this year, me, you scared me. What are you guys creative at? This picture right here is pretty creative. And I can make a text to self-connection to this. Someone made a wonderful picture to me. And when I, for me, when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's pretty similar. Has some of the same colors, like the white dots. I think this picture is pretty similar. It reminds me of it. This will be an example of a text to self-connection. I'm looking at what you guys are saying. Editing photos, video games, seahorses. I know a couple of you guys that are on here, you're good at writing. Denicia, Kendall. Is there anybody watching that knows what in the world this is? Looking at this, even though Nathan, Nathan is a little boy, I can tell that he's older than you guys because you guys don't know about this yet or you haven't learned about it in school. Does anybody know what this is? There's really nothing Nathan can't do. He's a ninja warrior through and through. His story may sound like one of a fable. Don't even get me started about that periodic table. So his story may sound like one of a fable. Does anybody know what that means? Let me read a little bit ahead. It says there's nothing Nathan can't do. He's a ninja warrior through and through. Hmm. There's nothing he can't do. The story may sound like one of a fable. What if that means sounds like it could be a lie? Because if it says there's nothing he can't do, most of the time people will be like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. And you know what I always say, if you tell yourself you can't do it, you really can't. I guess Nathan has a wonderful mind and he has a mind of being resilient and said, yep, yep, I'm going to do it. It was one morning when Nathan, just four years old, when I say that, what do you visualize? Just four years old, what do you visualize? Something irregular he did behold. Though Nathan noticed something was wrong, this was just the beginning of Nathan Strong. What do you guys think could possibly be wrong? Does anyone have a prediction? We see here, Nathan on the front cover, and he is called Nathan Strong. 
It says that something went wrong and it's just the beginning. Does anybody have an idea of what might be wrong with him? He's young. It's four. Anybody have any idea what he what might be wrong with him? Nathan felt sick, but never felt down. He always smiled through his frown. Even when his pain started to spread, visualize that. The pain is starting to spread. Does that mean it's getting better? Or does that mean it's getting worse? But it says here, he keeps smiling. Even when he had to shave the hair on his head. Oh no. So he's got pain that's spreading and he has to shave the hair on his head. What do you guys think is wrong with him? When do people have to shave hair on their head? Does anybody know? There he is with his head shaved. Some days were rough, but Nathan was tougher. Nathan fought hard on days he did suffer. Just like a Marine, brave and true, Nathan took his treatment as still as a statue. He has to have treatment had to cut his hair off. If no one has guessed, um, guessed it by now, he has something called cancer. When you have cancer, you have pain in your body and it does spread and you have to go in the hospital. When I say going to the hospital, what do you guys think? How do you feel about going to the hospital? No one really likes going to the hospital. And when it says Nathan took his treatment as still as a statue, I want you to visualize you're in the hospital and your treatment is going to go from what's called an IV down into your arm and you have to have a needle in there. Are you able to be still when you have to have that done to you? I can see why he is called Nathan Strong. Some adults are not even able to do that. What age was he when he started having this pain? Do you guys remember? Let's go back and find that answer. It was one morning when Nathan just four years old. Wow, he's only four years old. And even though he's having all of this pain, he's being strong. He's being happy. When he has to have a needle put in his arm, he's being just like a statue. Did I read this? Yes. Every day he did bat every day he battled friends and family by his side. The Nathan Strong Army was alone for the ride. As Nathan grew stronger, so did his crew. This little boy inspired them all to keep pushing through. Nathan Strong. So, even though he has had something really horrible to happen to him and he has cancer, he's inspiring other people. Can you guys think of someone else who has something bad to happen or something unfortunate that you don't expect to happen? It happened to her and she didn't let it stop her and she continued to do her dream or to live her dream? Does anybody know? Reminds me of Bethany Hamilton, who when she was a kid, older than Nathan, she was um, attacked by a shark and a shark bit her arm off. She didn't let that stop her from surfing. She continued to surf. And just like Nathan, she inspired other people. Does anybody know what this is? This is the Eiffel Tower and it's in Paris. Why would this be in this book? Nathan Strong movement made its mark both far and near. It was in Wilmington, North Carolina, where it made its premiere. Oh, so he lived not too far from us in North Carolina. To Switzerland, Greece, Paris, Germany, and Turkey. Even to Tennessee, where the mountains are smoky. So... Nathan went to all these places and he was strong and he inspired people while he was there. Here's a map. Why in the world would the illustrator put a map here? States across America caught sight of Nathan's smiling face. 
Nathan Strong was all over the place. At least half the country was on Nathan Strong's path. That's 25 states, according to my math. And Nathan went traveling around, inspiring people. You're in North Carolina, so you just made a text to self-connection. Why would this be here? What do you guys think? Landmarks and stadiums were on this trip. The Nathan Strong Army would not quit. Many miles were traveled, but no distance above. The supporter for Nathan that was filled with love. Nathan grew stronger with every passing day. He fought head on, he never shied away. His sickness was just another adventure and Nathan would not surrender. Don't give up, I won't give up. Don't give up, no, no, no. That's what I hear. He wouldn't stop, even though he had that cancer. And he was so young, he could have been like, oh, this is too hard. He kept his smiling face. I'm guessing he must have found something that made him happy. And he had people around him that loved him. And he was able to keep going. American Ninja Warrior. Nathan is stronger today than ever before. Now he has many more adventures in store. No work wall too tall. No spider climb too long. Nathan is stronger. Nothing is stronger than Nathan Strong. Here's the real Nathan. Here are actual photos of Nathan when he was young. This one looks like when he was in the hospital and they said that he was strong as, as still as a statue. These are the shirts that say Nathan Strong. And my guest who I'm not seeing any way to let him join he told me that Nathan and his family, as they traveled around the world, they wore these shirts. And that's what helped him to get through. And here's Nathan and his family. And that's the end of Nathan Shaw. So, Nathan, just like Bethany Hamilton, had things that happened to them when they were children, but they didn't let that stop them. So, I need for you, when something happens to you, and so far none of my great ones has had anything like cancer or a shark to bite their arm off. So if these people can continue to be strong and continue to smile and to inspire other people, and inspire means that this happened to me and I'm able to keep going so you can do it too. That's what it means to inspire someone. And that means that you guys should be able to do it too. And I do not know if anyone has a question about Nathan or the guy that was supposed to join me. He is the, I'll say the boss of a company that helps children who have cancer to write books. There have been other books that have been written by other children who have cancer and he helps them to write and to publish their books. His name is Michael Flatley. If any of you guys have some questions that you would like to ask, you can put it in the comments and I know that he's watching it and he can ask, answer those questions for you. And if you guys, does anybody have any questions? Any questions, go ahead and type them out now if you have some. Anything you would like to say, anything you would like to know. Are you saying how old? So how old is Nathan now is one of the questions. Here on the back of the book, he's nine years old. And this book was written this year. So he's either nine or 10 years old. It says Nathan is a brave nine-year-old boy who was diagnosed with kidney cancer when he was just four years old. Throughout chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation, he managed to smile, amuse, which means to make other people happy and laugh. His medical staff with math and periodic table songs and song his favorite hymns. Now in remission, that means the cancer is gone and it's not in his body. He loves math, sports, and spending time with his family, friends, and his dog, Rosie. So I guess he's nine years old now. 
Okay, so yes, Michael is here. Does anybody else have any questions for Michael? It says that he's 10 years old now and he's writing another book right now. So maybe we'll be able to read his second book. Any more questions? Why is he bald on the cover? Well, think about it. Why would he be bald? Leela, I want you to answer that question. Why would we have a picture of him being bald? Or maybe you don't know. When people have cancer and they go through chemotherapy, the medicines are so strong that it starts to make your hair fall out. So if you don't know anybody who's ever had cancer, that's what happens. So if you see somebody in the store or maybe even at school that's bald, don't look at them like, oh, because maybe they have cancer and maybe they had to go through radiation. And they wouldn't feel really good if you, know, you were staring at them like, would you? Something were wrong with you? So you can just pray for them if you're into prayer, or you can give them happy thoughts. Any other questions? Follow them to cover. Well, if you guys ask questions later, then I'll make sure that I get them to Mike. And then I'll get the answer to you guys. All right. So, because we have to do it, we have to do it. And a perfect story for you guys. This is the reason I read this one today is because I want you guys to be thankful. Those of you that are watching, or at least as I know, none of you have cancer. So that's something that you can be thankful for. You can be thankful that you're healthy. You can be thankful that you can see. You can be healthy, be thankful that your brain is working, that you're able to talk. You could be like Helen Keller, where you would not be able to see and you cannot be able to hear. So you need to be thankful for those things. So what I would like for you to do, actually I always do the happy about, what's one thing that you're truly thankful for? What is something that you are thankful for and you're like, I am so happy, I am so glad that I have this or I'm able to do this? Write that for me. Please give that to me. I would like to see some of you guys, if not everybody, one thing that you are thankful for. Because again, you guys are able to come on here. Most of you guys are doing your own typing. You're able to play. You're able to run. My great ones know that my first year teaching, I had a student that was born with one eye. And now she is grown and she has her own family. But all of you guys have lies. You have your hands. You have all of those things that you can be thankful for. Oh, you had a friend that had cancer last year, but that person survived. That's great. I see I'm thankful for my mom. I'm thankful for my house. I would like to see some more. Give me a couple more things that you guys are thankful for. My friends. Wonderful. Thankful for my PS4. A lot of people don't have that. Let me read one more comment. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? My puppy. I'm thankful for Robbie. He's out there sleeping somewhere. All right, really quick, because my time is just about up. I want you to think of one thing that you're happy about. One thing that you're, if you are really sad. One thing that if someone is on the bus and they're mean to you on the bus, because a lot of times I get that when you guys come in in the morning and you give me my morning hug and you're like, oh, he was mean to me on the bus. What's something that you can think of that will make you happy? Locked in. Now I want you to think of one thing that you did that you were proud of. Something that you can look at yourself in the mirror. You can say, I am so proud of that I. What is it? What is it? I want you to get the thing that you are happy about. And I want you to get that thing that you did that you are proud of. And I want you to lock it in your head. Lock it in your head. Inhale. Exhale. Smile. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will see you guys again next week. Remember, do something every single day to make someone else smile. Bye. Enjoy your Thanksgiving.